Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Sai Gaunkar. Let's continue our discussion of NCRT Science series. You already know on Study IQ we are running a science based discussion of NCRT texts. We began our discussion with class 6th NCRT, we finished it. Class 7 NCRT discussion is already done. And very recently we are done with class 8 NCRT science discussion. And today we are starting the textbook for class 9 science. If you want to view these video lectures of 6, 7, 8 for more comprehensive understanding, simply search for Rahul Sai 222 NCRT Science Series playlist. You will get all the videos there. Sixth and seventh discussion has been done in bilingual format on the main channel Study IQ IAS. From eighth, we are doing a discussion in English, Study IQ IAS English channel, and the ninth beginning today. For the ninth NCRT also we are going to follow the same format that means we are going to do a chapter by chapter analysis and since it's the beginning today we are starting with chapter 1 matter in our surroundings. What are we going to understand today? It is going to be the base of your chemistry knowledge. We are going to talk about matter. What is matter? Everything around us it, it is basically a matter. It may be a solid liquid or a gas but what is that matter composed of? We are going to understand that matter is composed of particles we are going to understand what are the characteristics of those particles what is the nature of solids what is the nature of liquids what is the nature of gases can matter transform from one form to another form we'll understand that what are the factors behind that is it temperature is it pressure we are going to talk about that we are also going to understand about some other phenomena like evaporation because in our normal day-to-day -day life in UPSC civil service preparation, you need to focus more and more on day-to-day -day activities. So, in our day-to-day -day activities, we see that we dry our clothes and without even heating them, they dry up. That means there is some sort of evaporation happening. So, we are going to talk about evaporation also. Right? So, this is going to be a, the agenda of our today's discussion. So, without any delay, let us begin. But before all that, if you are preparing for UPSC civil services examination, there is a good news for all of you. I received so many messages from people that, so we want P2I batch in English and finally English P2I batch is beginning from 19th June. This is the most comprehensive program for UPC civil services preparation where we will be hand holding you from prelims to mains to interview. If you clear your prelims, your entire mains residential program and its expenses would be taken care of by study IQ. Already mock interviews are planned. There is one to one mentorship, group mentorship, main science writing program, prelims test series. Everything is included in this. Just join as soon as possible. I'll see you in the class. And if you want heaviest of discount, do use my code Rahul Life. It can be applied on the app also and on the website also. Even if you call the representatives, you can tell them about this. No issues, right? Right. So I'll see you in the class very, very soon. All right, let's begin our discussion. As I told you, our discussion today is connected to matter. Now, from ancient times itself, people have been thinking about matter around us, right? People observing that something is solid shape, something is liquid, water is liquid, and there is gas around us. And we inhale that gas also, right? We inhale air, we use oxygen, we exhale air. That means we release out carbon dioxide from our body. So, we have been thinking about all these matters. Why something is solid, something is liquid, something is gaseous? What is the universe made up of? To find out these answers, we have given some philosophical answers also from ancient and medieval times. The Indian philosophers, they believe that every matter or our, our body is basically made up of five elements, the panchatatvas. What are those panchatatvas? Agni, Jal, Vayu, Prithvi and Akash. That means air, earth, fire, sky and water, sky or space you can use. So, these were the five elements Indian philosophers spoke about. The Greek philosophers also had some kind of similar analogy. But as modern science progressed, modern science observationist scientists, they started to do some experiments based on empirical data. They gave some properties of matter by studying their physical and chemical properties. But be it physical or chemical properties of any substance, they came to one conclusion. They came to conclusion that every matter it is composed of certain tiny particles. So, when we talk about the physical and in this discussion we are going to talk about physical nature of the matter first then slowly and steadily we will talk about the chemical properties also. But physical nature of matter 
when we study, we come to a conclusion that all the matter, whatever it is, be it a solid, liquid, gas, whatever matter it is, it is composed of certain basic particles. And the most basic particle of that is an atom. So, the answer to the question, what is matter? Matter is anything which is continuous, anything which is around us. It can be a solid, liquid or a gas. And that matter is composed of tiny particles called atoms which we cannot see. They are very, very small. So, this is the first point. Matter, anything around us, it is composed of atoms. The first point. And I told you, what are the characteristics? First is clear. And these tiny particles, as I told you, we cannot see them. They are called atoms. Atoms, more number of atoms or when they combine, it leads to creation of element. These are pure substances which we will talk about in our next interaction. Atoms leads to elements. When different elements combine through their chemical properties, they can lead to creation of molecules. In fact, any of these can be considered as the tiny particles which comprise the matter. All right? Molecules, when different molecules meet, then it leads to creation of different compounds. That's the basic idea we have already, right? Right? So, matter is made up of tiny particles. And what are the characteristics of these particles? It can be an atom, element, molecule. So, what are the characteristics? The first characteristic is that these particles, they have space in between them. For example, when you talk about water, now water is the most abundant thing that is around us, right, everywhere. If you look at the Mother Earth from the International Space Station, you will see the color blue. Blue is because of water. Now, water is made up of two different atoms. It is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And this matter or liquid, it has space in between them. The next property is particles are in are continuously moving. That means they have some sort of a kinetic energy with them. And the next property is particles continuously interact with each other. That means there is some sort of a connection between hydrogen and oxygen which is holding it together. So, this is the basic characteristic or basic nature of any matter. I am just not talking about water but any other matter. For example, air say nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, any liquid, carbon dioxide, water or say wood, this substance, anything, anything, it is made up of tiny particles, atoms, elements, molecules and these molecules have space between them, they are continuously moving, they are continuously moving, that means there is some sort of kinetic energy with them and they interact with each other. Let us try to get some proof regarding it, right. First point, I said matter has space between them. How do, I, how do I find it? As I cannot see it, but I can feel it, right? I take small amount of water in a beaker. Say this is the level of the water, right? This is H2O basically. Now, what do I do? I add some amount of salt into it. Now, what is this salt? This salt is sodium and chlorine, sodium chloride. Now, I mix it. When I mix it, you will see that water and salt, they have become a mixture. And technically, what should happen is the level of this water should rise, right? If they do not interact, if, they, if there is no space in water, then it should, the water should rise. But you will see the water level is not going to rise because the salt is continuously dissolved. Now, what is happening? The, the sodium and the chlorine atoms or, or these molecules, they are, they are now in the spaces that are available between H2O. That is the basic understanding. So, it proves this, yes, matter is made up of particles and these particles have spaces and they are continuously in motion. How? Because they have kinetic energy. You must have seen a phenomenon like this. Now, this is called as Brownian movement, right? You must have seen this. If there is a slit, if there is a slit opening and there is sunlight passing through it, you will see the dust particles of very minute particles, they are continuously in motion. In a colloidal solution, we do find Brownian motion. Now, why I am telling this is because Atoms or, or the matter itself, the atoms or molecules in the matter, they are constantly in motion. What kind of motion? It may be a vibratory motion, a translatory motion, oscillatory motion. It can be any kind of motion, right? Now, remember, this motion can be increased or decreased by changing its parameters. For example, if I raise the temperature of this water, it starts boiling. Why? Because now the particles are moving with more energy, the kinetic energy is increased. All right. These are some of the basic ideas. Now, apart from that, we do see that they interact somehow. 
they interact with each other and they are continuously in movement. How do I understand this? Now, how do I understand this? Now, let's, let's take an example that particles which are moving continuously because they have some sort of kinetic energy. Add the kinetic energy, how? I increase the temperature of it, more and more faster movement of these particles is seen. And in a mixture, you do the same thing. You do the same thing. That's, that means in a mixture, what is happening is, say, this is water. I take another example of a dye. Say, blue dye. I take a blue dye here. And water is colorless. There are water molecules. And then there are dye molecules. They interact. How do they interact? They interact through process of diffusion. Now, what is this diffusion? You add a small drop of this blue dye. Put it in water, do this experiment, you will see that the dye initially is here, but after some time, the entire water is blue in color because there is some sort of equilibrium which has been achieved. How? Because the molecules have interacted. Water molecules and the dye molecules have interacted and this process is called diffusion. Diffusion is basically a process where the, where the molecules, they move from higher concentration to a lower concentration till an equilibrium is reached. You must have seen this phenomena, not just in liquids, but anywhere. In liquids, it is quite visible. But in, in gases, it is it can be seen or it can be felt, not seen per se, felt. For instance, see, when I was in Bangalore, right, we never used to cook non-vegetarian food in our home. right? It's, it was a rented place. We never used to cook non-vegetarian food at home. So what used to happen was, the neighbor, the neighbor auntie, whenever she cooked, especially on Sundays, she used to cook non-vegetarian food. And we used to, we used to get a feel of that food, right? Because as soon as that, that smell comes, they're like, okay, there is something brewing, right? Something is getting prepared, probably chicken biryani or mutton biryani, right? So why, why does this happen? It happens because of diffusion, diffusion of gases. The smell comes very easily. For instance, the incense, right? You have incense or you have perfume. Why do you get that perfume feeling, right? You spray and the perfume slowly spreads. That is nothing but the process of diffusion itself. All right. Now, please remember diffusion is a process which occurs in all the three states. It happens in the solids, it happens in the liquids, it happens in the gases. Now, gases, it can be felt very easily. I gave you many examples, like right? the perfume example, the incense stick example, or the agarbatti stick example, or food that is cooked. I, I gave example, real time example would be felt, right? We used to, we used to salivate, right? <laughs> Chicken or mutton biryani is being prepared. Then we say, we'll go out. We'll have some nice dinner tonight, okay? Uh, that, that thing used to happen. So, with gases, you get a feel of it. With, li with liquids, you can actually watch it. You can conduct this experiment. For, for example, uh, say, every day in home, when you're cleaning your floor, what do you do? You put Lysol or the best example is you put Dettol, right? You put a small cup or a small cap of Dettol in the water and you will see, first of all, you will see the color also, the white color, the Dettol it transformed into white color and it slowly spreads into the water and the entire water, it smells now of Dettol. Why? Because of diffusion. So, diffusion occurs in gases and liquids, which is quite understandable, but it also occurs in solids and remember, diffusion in solids is slowest. It is slowest. Why? You will understand in some time. Diffusion is somewhere in between. Diffusion in liquids is faster compared to solids, but slower compared to gases. In gases, it is the fastest. Now, question, sir, diffusion occurs in solids also. Can you explain? Let me think. For example, say, uh, in your schools, you must have seen board, right? You must have seen a blackboard. And on the blackboard, the teacher used to write, the teacher say, I have written slowest here. Imagine it's a blackboard and I am writing slowest using a chalk. Slowest using a chalk. Now, what happens if you erase this chalk quickly, then the blackboard will be completely black. But imagine what you do, you write slowest, you write with a chalk on the blackboard and you leave it just like that. After some time, after one or two days, one week, two weeks, one month, you will see that some of the chalk has actually diffused into the, into the blackboard. And no matter how, how you try to clean the blackboard, it is never going to become completely black. So over a period of time, after using chalk and the board, you will see the color of the board slowly and steadily fades. Why? Because the chalk has now diffused into the solid. That's one of the examples. 
or else you can simply you can simply think of two metals kept together two metals kept together and uh, there would be there would be a joining give it time give it time one month two month one year so the gap the air gap between that completely dissipates and then there might be some sort of a temporary joining between them right? that's an example but do remember diffusion occurs in all the three states right next is what are the states i told you already solid liquid and gases now solids are something in which the particles whatever atom molecules etc they are very closely bound together they are very closely bound together and that is why they are always in a definite shape whereas in case of a liquid which is a state of matter here the molecules are free to move because there is a lot of space in between these molecules please remember i told you that beat any matter there is always spaces between these particles if you look at a solid also there is always space between these particles why because the atoms and the molecules they can vibrate as soon as you give temperature then you see heat is conducted electricity is conducted why because they are able to vibrate right and in gaseous form or in a gas the, the atoms or the molecules they are very loosely held together and they are free to move and that is why we get certain characteristics of these matters if if it is something of a solid we do know solids are rigid and they have definite or a fixed shape now you might have a question sir you said solids are rigid most of the solids are rigid for example now when i talk about say a rubber let me give you an example of rubber right a rubber you have a you have a currency note bundle and you put a rubber on it now that rubber is a solid material but that is elastic but it has definite shape yes you stretch it it will go back again to its shape so solids are rigid rigid meaning they have a definite shape they have a definite volume and they have higher density and the molecules here are very closely held together you can see you can see the picture here that the molecules are held very closely together of course there is some gap but the molecules are held very closely and the solids they undergo very little compression they undergo very little compression but when you talk about liquids liquids are not rigid they do not have any fixed shape in fact they take the shape of whatever object you put into it for example a glass of water glass of, there is a bottle there is a bottle of water or a glass of water if you pour water in a glass it takes the shape of glass if you pour water in the bottle it takes the shape of the bottle right so there's no definite shape yes it has fixed volume of course its density is lower compared to the solids and it undergoes slight compression in fact in fact liquids undergo very little compression solids and liquids they undergo very little compression but gas is something which is not rigid it does not have any fixed shape it does not have any fixed volume also its density is very very low and the particles are far away the particles are far away from each other that is why the movement or the diffusion is very very fast add to it it is highly compressible you must have seen you have you have a gas cylinder at your home that gas cylinder is approximately 15 16 i think 15 kg of lpg pumped into a small area right so gas can be compressed solids liquids and gases basic three forms of matter all right right again the question now is can one matter transform into another matter can solids transform into liquids can liquids transform into gases the answer is yes the most common example being water now water when i lower the temperature it becomes ice it becomes solid when i give it heat it becomes liquid when i give it more heat it becomes a gas so i can transform one form of matter into another form very easily but how do i transform them by giving some sort of input and when i say some sort of input it it is always corresponding to the particles now if you try to understand in a solid in a solid the particles are very closely aligned the particles are very closely aligned and of course these particles i told you they have space in it and they move in solids they move very very slowly but now i give it heat i give it temperature what is going to happen this is going to become liquid and in liquid the particles are also closely held together closely held together slowly and steadily i give it more and more heat and then finally it gets into the gaseous state so one thing can be transformed into another how by effect of temperature now as the temperature increases as i increase the temperature say something is a solid 
I increase the temperature of a solid, what is going to happen? The kinetic energy to the particles is increasing. I am increasing more and more kinetic energy. And at one point of time, the interaction between or the gap between these particles is going to increase more and more because they are going to vibrate more from their original position. And what is going to happen? They are going to change state from solid to liquid. And when this happens, it is called as melting point of that matter, of that solid matter. It a point or a minimum temperature at which a solid melts and becomes a liquid, it is called as melting point. And higher the melting point of a matter, that means it is the indication of the strength of force of attraction between the particles. Meaning, if I have to heat it more and more, that means the atoms of the particles are held very closely together. They are interacting through a very strong cohesive force or an attractive force and I have to give more and more energy so that they become loose. So, solid transforms into a liquid. After I raise its temperature, after I raise its temperature to melting temperature, it becomes liquid state. And I keep on giving it temperature. I keep on giving it more and more energy. I keep on heating it. And at one point of time, it changes its state from liquid to gaseous state. And this is called as boiling temperature. Right? This is called as boiling temperature. This is called as melting temperature. All right, for water, we know that 0 degree Celsius or 273 Kelvin basically is the, the melting point. Add 100 degree Celsius to it, you will get the boiling point. All right. Now, there, is, there are some areas or there are some points at which when a matter is being transformed from solid to liquid, from liquid to gas, the temperature of that matter remains the same, but the, it continuously takes in energy. And these are called as latent heats. For instance, if there is a solid, say imagine there is a solid ice and from ice if something is transformed into liquid at this temperature it becomes liquid but it will remain at this temperature by absorbing some sort of heat without any raise in temperature this is called as latent heat of fusion latent means hidden heat means the heat is being captured by the solid body but its temperature is not rising but after that particular rise after latent heat of fusion is added to it temperature again rises, it reaches to liquid state and when it is boiling at the evaporation stage, we also get latent heat of vaporization. So, latent heat is basically that heat or amount of heat, latent heat of fusion is amount of heat required by a solid substance to change its phase from solid to liquid phase at a constant temperature and that constant temperature would be 0 degree Celsius. The same thing applies, I am giving example of water, the same thing applies for latent heat of vaporization. It is the amount of heat a liquid substance takes to turn itself into the gaseous phase at a constant temperature. And for water, this would be 100 degrees Celsius. For different matters, these temperatures differ. For example, if you take oil, if you take any other thing, the temperature differs for all of these. And in chemistry, there is a denotion also. We, we denote latent heat of fusion by HF and this by HV. All right. And the heat that is given here, it basically corresponds to the melting point. Now, the temperature at which it takes heat continuously without raising its temperature, it's called melting point and the same boiling point. All right, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. Clear? Right, let's move on. Let's talk about effect of pressure. Now, I already understood that as I give temperature, as I heat a matter, it transforms from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. Can I do the same thing by changing its pressure? Can I do it by changing the pressure? The answer would be yes. In fact, in our real life applications, we use a combination of pressure and temperature to change the form of matter. For example, we have carbon dioxide. Have you heard of something called a dry ice? Dry ice or simple your fire extinguisher. You must have seen fire extinguisher everywhere. In fire extinguisher, it is basically dry ice. And how is the dry ice made? The dry ice has been reduced from carbon dioxide directly to dry ice, solid dry ice. How? By applying pressure. That means you increase the pressure, you decrease the temperature, you create dry ice. So, what, what do I understand from this? I understand that matter can be transformed from solid to liquid, liquid to gas or from solid to gas or liquid to gas directly or vice versa. And this process, if I transform from solid to liquid, it is called as the process of fusion. 
if i transform from liquid to solid it is called solidification of freezing basically if i transform from solid to gas directly by playing around with pressure and temperature it is called as sublimation solid to gas and from gas to solid it is called as deposition so basically when i transform carbon dioxide from gas if i increase the pressure and reduce the temperature it directly becomes dry ice solid ice solid dry ice and if a liquid is transformed into a gas this is already known vaporization and a liquid transforming and a gas transforming into liquid it is called as condensation so please keep a track of these terms very very important sometimes although very very simple topic but silly mistakes can occur please try to focus on this that matter can be transformed from one form to another form if i ask a question solids can only be transformed to liquid by adding temperature right there is no need solids can directly be transformed into gas solids can be transformed into liquids liquid can be transformed into solids liquid can be transformed into gas and gas to liquid everything is possible by playing around with pressure and temperature all right you need to understand this very very important concept right so matter can be transformed from one form to another form very easy now many a times in our day to day activities day to day life we do see that without any sort of heating i am not boiling say i am not boiling anything but evaporation is occurring you must have seen this in your day to day activities you wash your clothes and you keep them to dry but you know that there is a constant day temperature say for example day temperature is around 30 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius and at 30 degrees celsius only the clothes are drying how is this happening i am not boiling i am not increasing the temperature but at a constant temperature these clothes are slowly and steadily they are losing moisture how in form of vapor itself now this process is called as evaporation remember evaporation evaporation is a phenomena of changing of a liquid into vapor into vapor at a temperature which is below its boiling temperature clear so evaporation is a process where i transform a liquid dry clothes it has water liquid in it it is transformed directly into vapors at temperature which is way below its boiling temperature around 30 degrees celsius but how is this occurring how is this happening how is this happening again the reason behind this is the same the particles of the matter i told you they continuously keep on moving and they are never at rest at any given temperature in any gas liquid or solid the particles are at different amounts of kinetic energy and because of this kinetic energy continuously you will see you will see that even at 30 degrees celsius slowly and steadily the particles of liquid they get converted into vapor and they evaporate is it proved now that particles are constantly in motion be it whatever temperature and that is why we see drying of clothes very easily and this process of evaporation it basically depends on certain factors you can see you can see as i told you evaporation is connected to this the particles are continuously moving and evaporation is a process which occurs mainly because of loss of thermodynamics meaning heat is always transferred from a hotter body to a colder body and that is what is happening in mother earth we see there is a heat budget the heat deficit regions they receive heat from heat surplus regions and that is why evaporation occurs and it depends on multiple factors the evaporation rate it depends on temperature meaning on a sunny day you will see the clothes will dry very fast that means if the temperature is high then the evaporation is high if the temperature is low the evaporation rate is low correct means it depends on temperature second it also depends on surface area meaning if there is high surface area the evaporation would be higher meaning more kinetic energy is lost and the uh, the basically the liquid molecules are turned into vapor very easily and lower the surface area lower is the evaporation you must have seen this for instance if i wash if i wash this cloth say if i wash this shirt and I simply put after after putting it in water without without wringing it and without doing anything I simply throw it somewhere will it dry faster it will not dry then the best thing would be to basically 
broaden this shirt or widen this shirt and then put it for drying. It will dry very easily. Correct? Yes. That means surface area is increasing. You must have seen this also when you are having your tea. When you have your tea, what happens? Your, your parents or grandparents, they used, to, they used to put tea in a saucer. What is the difference between cup and a saucer? The cup has no surface area. As soon as you put it in the saucer, the surface area or exposure to atmosphere is more. And that is why it cools very fast. Right? So, surface area. And it also depends on humidity. This is quite understandable. Simple. If the humidity, if the relative humidity is very high, the evaporation rate would be very low. And if the relative humidity is dry, that means the air does not have moisture, then more and more evaporation can be seen. Apart from that, wind speed. If there is wind speed, higher wind speed means higher evaporation. Lower wind speed means lower evaporation. So, these are the four factors on which evaporation depends. Apart from this, evaporation has a very important effect of cooling. Whenever we see evaporation, there is cooling of the surrounding. Why? Again, the explanation can be understood by understanding that the matter moves continuously. Whenever there is evaporation, natural cooling occurs. The basic concept here is the matter is changing state. Matter is changing state. Now, when a matter changes state, I told matter changes from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. Now, when there is a change of the state, it is absorbing energy. Meaning, when there is a change of state, solid is gaining more and more energy and it is becoming liquid, liquid to gas or vice versa. It can, if you, if you, if you go in the reverse order, it must either receive energy or lose energy. And the, the molecules, they basically shift phase from liquid to gas. Meaning, they require higher energy to overcome their potential energy and turn it into kinetic energy. What happens as a result of this? The liquid, it absorbs the energy from the surroundings. The liquid, when, when the liquid is transforming into the, uh, transforming into the gas, it needs more energy. Where is that energy coming from? That energy is coming from the surroundings and that is why the surroundings get cooled. So, whenever there is evaporation, then evaporation leads to cooling of the surroundings. Why? Because the excess energy that is needing, needed for this evaporation, it is taken from these surroundings and these surroundings, they lose energy. That's why there is some sort of cooling effect. And we have seen so many applications of this. You must have used cooler. It's a summer season now. You must have used cooler. The cooler basically runs on the same principle. The cooler runs on evaporation and cooling effect itself. The desert cooler, you must have seen that it cools better on a hot and dry day. Why? Because the evaporation principle is working. I told you it depends on your humidity. If it is a dry day, relative humidity is low. It is hot day. What happens is it is taking heat from the surroundings and the surroundings are cooled. Right? Same phenomenon for touch and spirit. Now, for example, when I when I apply the deodorant or when I simply take acetone on my hand, the acetone vaporizes and I get the cooling effect. My hand feels cool. Why? Because the energy is taken from there itself and my hand is cooled. The same applies for working of earthen pot. You must have seen your matka or earthen pot. It cools your water. How does it cool? How does it cool? Because the water is evaporating and the water is evaporating slowly and steadily from the surroundings heat is he's taken up the surroundings are cooled and when the surroundings are cooled then the water inside the earthen pot it also cools right same is for cooling of your homes cooling of a body for example now i'm sweating now there is sweat here now whenever i sweat what is the reason behind this sweating reason behind sweating is again the same concept of evaporation the liquid transformed into gas and whenever there is wind then i get i get that cooling effect why because evaporation has cooling effect it tries to maintain my body temperature constant same for temperature of tea you must have seen temperature of tea again cooling effect because of cooling effect the tea gets cold and you can have it easily in a saucer so many examples you get in your day-to-day -day life right so this is about matter solids liquid gases one form of matter can be transformed into another form of matter evaporation and its applications let us end the discussion by some very interesting snippets. The NCRT talks about some other states of matter. From our school days, we have been taught there are three states of matter. There is solid, liquid, gas. But today, we can talk about 
फाइव स्टेट्स ऑफ मैटर अपार्ट फ्रॉम द सॉलिड स्टेट द लिक्विड स्टेट एंड गैशियस स्टेट देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज प्लाज्मा स्टेट न दिस प्लाज्मा स्टेट इज बेसिकली आयोनाइज गैस स्टेट इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ सुपर एनर्जेटिक एंड सुपर एक्साइटेड पार्टिकल्स विच आर गैसियस आयोन्स द गैस it gets ionized and it gets charged and this gas you must have seen uh, we we use the uh, fluorescent tube lights we use other lamps etc there you must have seen use of plasma in it right if you uh, if you blast the tube the tube light that we used to get before fluorescent tubes it it used to have gas in it and that gas would get into plasma state to give you light better bright light so plasma is one of the states in fact plasma state can be seen your sun can be seen your sun right uh, that is why we are facing a lot of difficulties you can connect this particular discussion with your thermonuclear fusion reaction thermonuclear fusion reaction is being run in the iter international thermonuclear experimental reactor where the plasma confinement has become a big challenge and for that they are using a process called as tokamak you must have heard about it if you have not heard do follow current affairs to know about that to confine that plasma in a space tokamak has been created a toroidal shape or a, or a donut shaped magnetic confinement method is being used right lightning also creates this whenever there is lightning in and around the lightning the gas molecules they are ionized and plasma state can be seen whenever lightning occurs but there is also another fifth state of matter which is called as bose einstein condensate it is mostly experimental but we have already proved a fifth state of matter called as bose einstein condensate it exists indian physicist satyendranath bose sn bose he had done a lot of calculation regarding the fifth state of matter and his work was further built up by albert einstein and that is why this fifth state of matter is called as bose einstein condensate and it was eventually proved in 2001 and scientists received nobel prize in 2001 eric cornell wolfgang ketterel and carl e weinman they received the nobel prize for proving that bose einstein condensate it exists it was formed by cooling a gas at extremely low density about 100000s of the density of normal air then you get bose einstein condensate again i would say plasma and bose einstein condensate are more and more relevant from experimental point of view but in our day to day lives we do watch solid liquids and gases sometimes during the lightning etc yes plasma state is seen but again you, you you cannot feel that per se right solid liquid gases are something which you can feel very easily but in general remember solid liquids gases plasma and bose einstein condensate these are the five states of matter that are there clear right this is the end of our discussion of the first chapter in fact from 9th standard you will find that a lot of technicalities also come in your syllabus and based on judgment some of the details can be omitted which are not very important for upsc civil services perspective I, i would be eliminating probably some of the chapters or some of the content from it which are highly technical maybe not required for us but all this information is very very relevant as of now right that's the completion of chapter 1 i'll see you again in the next chapter thank you for watching this video and you do know that if you like this video you can always follow me on my social media handle @rahulsai222 thank you again jai hind